All right, welcome to uh, another tutorial. Um, this time, I kind of thought about the environment setup and just kind of the stuff that um, I want to do, and I don't really want to deal with environments, so I'm doing this tutorial. It's uh, the simplified version. Um, basically, what we're going to do is I'm not going to walk you through this because it should be pretty self explanatory. But what I want you to do is install this. This is NetBeans with the Java SDK. Then I want you to install the MySQL Workbench. You're going to need to create an account for that. Then install VirtualBox, Git. You want to make sure that you install Git Bash and the Git UI. Really, you want to make sure you install Git Bash for sure because we're going to be using that in this tutorial. You want to make sure that you install Vagrant and then this driver. Um, and be sure you select the one that's appropriate for your OS. You'll see 64 at the end or 86. If your operating system's 64-bit, uh, uh, select the 64. If it's 86, select 86. I don't think we'll run into any ARM processors, but if you, we do, there is a driver option there for you, and that allows you to run the uh, PHP on Windows. So the first step, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to WAMPserver.com, and what WAMP stands for is Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, and this will allow us to install PHP without um, going through a lot of headache, which we don't want to do. So let me open up Chrome, um, and let me move this a little bit so that you can see where I'm going. So you want to go there, and this is all going to be in the description. And I'm going to move this over right here. You want to click on Download, and then you want to click, in my case, since I have a 64-bit OS, I'm going to click right here. Now notice that it's saying that you should download this before you install it. I've already told you to download that. That's the link I gave you. So if you're following the instructions, you should be just fine. So go ahead and click direct download. Um, and this will download it from Search, Search Forge in about five seconds. So there we go. And it should be up in a second. As soon as it's up, I'm going to click on it. And we'll just go through the steps of installing WAMP. It's really, really easy, guys. So it's done downloading. I'm then going to install it. Yes, I do want to install it. You click Next. Accept the licensing agreement. You want to check these two. You want to create a desktop icon. And this takes about a few seconds, so we're just going to let this thing install. I'm going to pause the video because this is not too exciting. It will ask you for a pop-up the end, asking you for your default browser. Just click OK. Um, don't worry about that. We're not going to be dealing too much. We're not going to be developing on WAMP. We're just using, we're really using it just to install um, PHP. But you can develop on it if you want. Uh, we're going to be using Vagrant to develop on. Okay, this was the pop-up that I was telling you about. Just click Open. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, just don't worry about it. Uh, put your email address. I'm just going to put fake at fake.com. I don't really, I'm not really using the SMTP server. You can put your email address if you want to. And then click finish, and you're done. And then click yes to that, um, and that will automatically launch WAMP. And what we can see is down here, my WAMP is already turned green. It's going to be in your lower right corner. This is the WAMP server. We're not really going to be using that for this tutorial, so don't worry too much about it. Next, I want you to go to this website, getcomposer.org, download that URL. You're going to see this. Let me scoot this over. Oops. Sorry about this, guys. Scoot this over a little bit, and you can see home. You're going to click on download, which you're already there, and I'm going to scoot this down. What we want is the Windows installer for Composer. So that would be right here. You would click on that. And that's already downloaded. Downloaded pretty quick for me. You want to click Yes. And you want to click Next. Next. Let me exit out of this. For me, my, um, my uh, WAMP path is this. You're going to have to click Browse and Browse to it, but it will be C. WAMP bin PHP, your version of PHP, and then the PHP.exe file. 
So in my case, I'm using 5.5.12. You'll probably be using the same. So just go ahead and click Browse and find that. Then click Next again and install, and that should install Composer. Pretty quick, easy process to do. Let me see what we need to do next. Okay, once this is done, um, let's see. We've got WAMP installed. We've got Composer installed. I think the next thing we need to do is we need to get clone um, the Laravel Homestead project, which is what we're going to be using. So let me pull up um, our Git Bash tool. So give me one second, guys. Git Bash. Type that in. So just open that up however you need to, and it should look like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, git clone Laravel project. So that's basically this right here. We're going to type that into our git bash terminal. So right click, edit, paste. And that's going to clone, create a folder called web projects. And it's going to clone that. And notice um, that it's in the owner folder. So It'll be in whatever user you're in. So for me, um, that would be if I went to C, this is on Windows 8, C drive, users, and then my username is owner. It'll be in that folder. And notice that we do have a um, folder called web projects, and that's where it put the Laravel stuff. Pretty cool. Next thing we need to do is, I think it's the MK directory. Pulled up the wrong thing, sorry guys. In fact, we're going to close out of that just so we don't do anything stupid. Yeah, we're going to create uh, our .homestead folder by typing, we'll put that in by typing mkdir.homestead into. That. And what that'll do is it'll create a .homestead folder. So mkdr means make directory, and we're going to type .homestead, which is the name of our directory, and that should make a directory. And let's see if we can see it. ls stands for list, so we should see a .homestead somewhere around here. Let's see. Let's see. I don't see it here. You, you guys probably do, but I don't. If we go to this folder, we go back to owner, and we should see it. Yeah, we see it right here. So the dot homestead is right there. I guess it might not list dot files, or maybe I'm just missing it. No big deal. But we created that. So what we need to do now is we need to go to go to collect certain files from what we downloaded from GitHub, the homestead. So go into the SRC stubs, and I want you to copy all these these three files. Control C, go back to the web projects, go to the owner, and then copy them to the homestead, like so. And what we're gonna do is we're going to basically copy all this and put that in place of our homestead YAML and I'm going to explain what that is and what that does a little bit and I'm going to edit this a little bit for me um, you're more than welcome to keep it the same okay so first thing is um, the IP address that's going to be the IP address of our VM the second thing is the memory that's in megabytes. In my case, I want to up it to 496 or 4 megabytes. That's 4096 megabytes or 4 gigabytes, I should say. It was at 2 gigabytes before. There's megabyte to gigabyte converters that you can use online. Um, this is where we're going to keep our SSH key. So we're going to type in a command that will generate our SSH keys. You don't have to worry about that at all. Um, this is kind of interesting. This is our web projects folder, and that'll map to our VM home vagrant code. Um, so also our PHP examples, 
So phpexamples.app, that URL, is going to map to this folder. And we can have as many of these sites as we need to. This is just going to create a database for us called Homestead. And this is going to create an Apache variable, not an Apache variable, but a um, config, uh, like a configuration variable um, called local, which is pretty cool. Um, so we're going to save this. So save that file and exit out of it. Um, as far as the memory goes, you can, you have to do what's appropriate for your machine. So if you have like two gigs of memory, you want to lower it down to 1024, which would be like one gig of memory. If you have a lot of memory, you can bump it up to like what I did to 4096. If you only have four gigs, just keep it where it's at. So, you know, just use, um, just use common sense there. So I'm going to close out this file. I'm going to close this out. We're back here. And we're ready to go. So let's see what's next on our list. We added that. Um, oh, I think we forgot to... We forget... Okay, yeah, we're still, we're still good. So before we go forward, we want to add this to our host file. So in order to do that, you're going to have to open up Windows as an administrator. And op not open up Windows, but open up Notepad as an administrator. So you're going to go to Notepad and just right-click on Notepad and, type, and type, uh, click on Run as Administrator. And you want to click Yes for because you can do damage. We're, don't worry about that, though. We're not What we're doing is relatively safe. So you're going to click File, Open, and you're going to navigate to the Windows System32 Drivers ETSA folder. And notice you don't see anything. That's because we're looking at text documents. You want to look at all files. So click there. And then you want to select the host file. And here you'll paste this. Ah, not that. But you'll paste, um, let's see. So let's control C. And control V right here. It should be the same thing. So you'll paste that. So what that's saying is it's matching the IP up to the URL. Only you will be able to see this though. So every time you add a new site to your homestead.yaml file, and we will be doing that in our tutorial series, you'll just come back here and you'll add it here. So if we have like um, awesome app dot app and ww dot awesome app dot app you would you know you would basically add it right there you'd have to add it every time you create a new site so that's no big deal we're gonna save that just control s and exit out and we're going to do some stuff Okay, I want to look in this, look at this too, because I think I might have skipped a step. So let me go back to, I'm going to open the file manager. You go to C, and I'm looking at this users, owners. I'm going to go to our dot .homestead, open that up. Okay, yeah, this isn't quite right. Now I'm looking at it. So what we really need is we want in our web projects this. To actually, we want to create a folder in this web project called code. So I'm going to fix that, what you copy and paste in here, but we want web projects code to match this. And the reason is, is that we don't want to mix up our vagrant files with the actual codes, uh, the code of our site. So we're just going to control S and save that. So that was a mistake I made. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so now we're going to... CD, which means change directory, tilde sign, that'll take us to the owner folder or the current user. And we're going to type in web projects. So we can type in WE tab. And then we're going to type in, and I just, that'll show us all the available folders. So we'll just hit enter and we'll type in MKDIR. Uh, code C O D E, 
and I just created the code folder. So if I do ls, you can see the code folder right there. Next thing we need to do is we need to mkdicd into the code folder and just mkdir php examples and that'll create the folder where our future site is going to be. So now that we have that, we're good to go as far as that stuff goes. Um, ironically, I'm going to have to open this up again because we still have a little bit more left to do here. So just bear with me for a second. So we're going to do git bash. So we'll go here. And what we're going to do is we're going to generate our SSH key. This is relatively easy. Control C. And just paste that in, paste this command in. This will generate the SSH key. In my case, it's going to overwrite what I have, but I don't really care about that. That's cool. Next thing we need to do is we need to add um, the Laravel box to Vagrant. So if you have Vagrant installed, uh, one good way to check that is just to type in Vagrant. And you should see like a list of commands. It'll pop up in like a second or so. And yeah, you see the list of commands. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this box to Vagrant. So I'm going to do edit, paste. And I'm going to get an error because I already have this box added. You won't get this error. It'll just download the box for you. But if I wanted to download the box anyway, I could just do force, and I'll show you what you should see. So I'm just forcing the, the boxes I currently have to be rewritten. And this will take eh, probably about three minutes. Okay. So then we're going to Vagrant up. So yeah, we'll put this actually right here. And we'll say type terminal mkdir. We'll just add these to our thing. PHP examples type terminal cd code type in terminal cd web projects okay so what you do is just fine let's see where our virtual machine is we've got a little bit longer than i expected it's taking so let me just pause the video i'll be right back in a second and we will uh continue on okay so now we've uh, successfully downloaded the box uh, the next thing we need to do is just create the um, SSH keys. Let me just make sure and see that we, yeah, we didn't do that. So we need to create the SSH keys. Really easy to do. We're just going to copy this command in like so. So you can control C, that'll generate our SSH keys. So we just need to do that really quick. Edit, paste. And I think we already did do this, but anyway, I forgot. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, we did. Now I'm remembering. I'll just go through it again. Be real quick. We just generated our SSH key. So the next step is to Vagrant up. And what that will do is that will um, basically start up our machine. So, oh. Oh, the reason, it, okay, so this didn't work because we need to navigate to our uh, machines folder. I don't know why we're um, not there, but that's okay. So we'll just type in CD web projects and then code uh, web projects. So type that in and then type in vagrant up. And that should start uh, vagrant. So put that in our notes too. Just in case they wind up there, type terminal cd web projects. 
and our machine should be starting up. This will take about five or ten minutes depending on your uh, machine. And I'm going to pause the video once I see a little bit more just to make sure that it goes. And let me just, let's just see what else we have. So I'm going to SSH into it, set up Xdebug, and create our PHP project, and make sure Xdebug works. So once we're done with that, um, we're pretty much good to go. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video. We'll come back once the virtual machine's up. And, yep. Yeah. Okay, it looks like our projects, uh, our Vagrant machine's done and in installing, so we can do type in Vagrant SSH. That'll allow us to log into our virtual machine via the terminal. That's basically what SSH is about, a lot of what SSH is about. So let's do that. Okay, so we've logged in with SSH. So our next step is to set up Xdebug. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to edit our Xdebug file. So we're going to right click and paste that command in, click enter, and let's go ahead and just delete all of it and just replace it with um, my Xdebug config, which I put right here. And we're going to paste this in, so edit, paste. Once you know it's been pasted in, you can do Control-O. And in Nano, that will basically write the file, and then Control-X to exit. And then we're going to restart um, the whatever that is, which should restart the um, whatever we need to restart in order for this to take effect. I don't know a lot about this stuff. Uh, this actually came from uh, this right here, so I want to give credit where credit's due. So we'll put that URL right there so you can read it yourself. Um, our next step is we're going to create the um, project NetBeans and um, just create a simple file. Make sure that our website's able to show up in our browser. And make sure that our um, and make sure that we can use Xdebug. So we're going to push this down. Let's open up NetBeans and let's we'll do it. So I'm opening NetBeans up right now. I'll move this to the corner right here. I'll move this icon out of the way. Cancel that, whatever that is. So now we're going to create a new project. So we're going to go to File, New Project. I'm going to move this over here. We're doing a PHP application. We don't have any existing source code. We're going to call it PHP Examples, but we should be able just to browse and find that. So remember, it's in our Web Projects folder. So we'll just go up to the Owner folder, and we'll find Web Projects. It's right here. Go to code, and our project's going to be in PHP examples. We're using 5.6 UTF-8. That's all good. I'm going to go back, and be sure to rename this to PHP examples. That way everything's consistent. Um, our project URL is going to be PHP examples.app. And we don't have any framework, so we can click Finish. And we don't have anything to install with Composer. Very cool. So now we're going to go here. We're going to click this one right here, New File. We're going to come to here. We're going to create a PHP file. It's going to be called index.php. We're going to click Finish. And we're just going to create something um, silly. Or not silly, but just something that we, with an if statement, something that we can debug, you know, just to make sure the debugger is working. So we're going to say 
put a boolean value called is php awesome and we'll set that to true and I forgot my semicolon if is php is awesome if that's true echo php rocks awesome and we'll just go ahead just for effects just add some like that so this is good enough for us to debug so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that this url works that the url is working so we're going to go to our web browser in my case i'm using chrome you're free to use whatever you want we're going to do php examples dot app and that we're going to have to type in http i'm sorry guys so php examples dot app and you can't see it completely i just moved it but you can kind of see php rocks so we know that the web server is working so our next step is going to be setting up xdebug we do that by right clicking on the project going to properties this window will appear you're going to click run configuration you want to select index.php which is already being selected for you but wherever your starting point would be if you were using laravel it would be public index if you were using symphony it would be app and then app underscore dev.php or whichever environment you're testing if you're using symphony basically it's the starting point of your app then you want to do advanced um, and in our case we want to set the port to 9000 and we want to call it, do http colon slash slash php examples dot app so type that in make sure that's cool and click ok and then in NetBeans, what you what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go just do a little bit of uh, tool changing you're going to want to go to tools and you're going to want to click options and go ahead and click on php debugging make sure this is unchecked this will usually be unchecked and then just click apply which you can see right here and OK in our case we're not going to need to change anything so the next thing we need to do is we just need to check and see that our debugger is indeed working so what we're going to do is we're going to debug this state this line right here so what you do when you want to debug something in NetBeans is you just click debug and then debug project that'll open up a web browser usually in my case it's Firefox and we'll click no so this already fired for some reason um, let's try it again Okay, that's a little strange. So we'll exit out of that session. Let's see. Okay, it looks like it's working now, so you might have to click it a few times, but if I go here, you can see that it is um, stopping there where I put the breakpoint. So you click on the line you want the breakpoint, and you should see like a little purple dot. If I click plus, it should be gone. So I don't know what that was about, but just click um, when you're ready to go, just click debug project. Cancel that. Let's close the session and just click this or you can click debug project and you notice that it's, it's uh if you look right here you'll see this spinning so that means it's waiting for us usually and you can see that it hit right here for some reason this isn't hitting i don't know why um maybe it always equals true or something try right here too just so kind of see what's going on 
where we close the tutorial. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll open it up again. Okay, so there. So yeah, it doesn't even pass through this, which is kind of weird. But whatever. Um, so it is working. X debugs working just fine. So that's good. Uh, we'll close out of it. So the next thing you want to do is you want to go back to your git bash tutor, uh, terminal and type in exit. And that will exit you out of um, SSH. If I can select it, exit. And then when you're done with your machine, you can do vagrant destroy. Um, right now, for me, that's I'm just not going to do that because I want to keep this one up. I might do sleep or figure out the sleep method. But that's basically how you would set up your Homestead developer environment. Um, this is all going to be posted uh, in the description, the instructions. And that will get you set up. You'll have MySQL Workbench, which you'll be able to use to connect to your server. The other thing you want to do um, also is you want to go to um, the Homestead URL. So we'll go there really quick. And I just want you to be aware of a few things. So we're in the Laravel documentation. We're currently on 4.2. And if we click on Homestead, and we click on, we scroll all the way down. Let me just move this a little bit down. So you can see all the ports that you're supposed to connect to when you connect to MySQL. You can see the usernames and all that stuff. So we'll include this URL in our list too. And that will help you hook up everything. We're going to do that in another tutorial because this one has gone way too long. So we're going to say documentation for Laravel Homestead. It's right here. And that about does it. That does our uh, PHP tutorial series. Hope you have a great day. And um, I'll... Talk to you guys soon.